Okay, so section 2.5 is algebraic proofs. The objective in this lesson is to review properties of equality and to use them to write algebraic proofs and to identify properties of equality and congruence. My vocab is proof. So a proof is an argument that uses logic, definitions, properties, and previously proven statements to show that a conclusion is true. An important part of writing a proof is giving justifications to show that every step is valid. So proof looks something like this. We'll have like an algebraic one. We'll have something like x squared minus 5 is equal to 17. Just this is an example. And then we're going to write each step on this side. And then on the right side, we write the justification for the step. So the reason why we're doing each step. So just like how we've been doing algebra before, we would just make a justification for each step now in the proof. Yep, we just prove how we got the answer. To prove that it's right, so we show our work. Yep, show, you have to show your work and give a reason for each step. Oh. So these are all the properties of equality. So the reason, so the right side of the proof will have reasons like this. The addition property of equality, subtraction property of equality, multiplication property of equality, division property of equality, reflexive, symmetric, transitive, and substitution. So if you notice, all of these have an equal sign because it's talking about equality. So it's like what you do across the equal sign. We'll go over a lot of examples. The distributive property states that a times b plus c is equal to ab plus ac. So remember, when we're distributing, we would multiply a times b, and then a times c, and we get ab plus ac. So here's our first example. Solve the equation 4m minus 8 is equal to negative 12. Write a justification for each step. So we're going to rewrite the equation, which is 4m minus 8 is equal to negative 12. And the reason for this step is because it's given. It's, it's given. It's given in the question. We're just we're rewriting the equation that's given. Okay, what would be the next step? If we're solving for m, what would we do to this equation? So you're adding 8 to both sides of the equal sign. So this step would be the addition property of equality. What we just did on the second slide, the third slide. So we have to have all of them or just one in our, in the? We are solving each step of the equation and giving a justification for each step. So it's not gonna have every single one of those. Okay, I was about to say, I'm like, that's a lot. So we're just giving a justification for each step that we do. Okay. So that was our first step. So now we have 4m is equal to negative 4. And this step is, we're just simplifying. Is it the division? Did we do division yet? Oh, no. Nope, we just simplified. We added 8, so these cancel out, and negative 12 plus 8 is negative 4. So all we did is simplify. What would we do next when solving for m? Division. So we divide by 4, both sides of the equation, and this would be division property of equality.
So now the 4's cancel out, so we have m is equal to, what's negative 4 divided by 4? Negative 1. And all we did was simplify again. <coughs> and that's it. We got our answer. And we gave a justification for each step of the way. So this is how you do a proof. Let's look at another example. Solve the equation 1 half t is equal to negative 7. Write a justification for each step. So first we're going to rewrite the problem. 1 half t is equal to negative 7. And our justification for this step is given. What do we do next to solve for t? Multiply both sides of the equation by 2. So we would have 2 times 1 half t is equal to 2 times negative 7. And this would be, what's our reason for this step? Multiplication, property of equality. because we're multiplying on both sides of the equation. So now the twos cancel out and we're left with t is equal to, then we have two times negative seven, which is negative 14. Negative 14. And this step we just simplified. And that's our proof. Another example. What is the temperature in degrees of Fahrenheit F when it's 15 degrees Celsius? Solve the equation F is equal to 9 fifths Celsius plus 32 for F and justify each step. So what do we do first? Rewrite the problem. Rewrite the problem. So we're stating our given. So we write F is equal to 9 fifths Celsius plus 32, and this is given. So if we're trying to find the degrees in Fahrenheit when it's 15 degrees Celsius, what do we do next? We, multiply, put, 15 in we put 15 in for C. So we would have F is equal to 9 fifths times 15 plus 32. What did we do? We plugged 15 in for C, so we did the substitution. Property of equality. What would we do next? What are we multiplying? 15 times 9 over. So we'd multiply 9 fifths times 15, which is? 135 over 70. So it's 27 plus 32. And what did we do for this step? We simplified.
What do we do next? Add 32 plus 27. Add 32 plus 27, so we have 59 degrees. And what did we do in the last step? Simplification. Simplified. So like algebra, geometry also uses numbers, variables, and operations. For example, segment lengths and angle measures are numbers. So you can use these same properties of equality to write algebraic proofs and geometry. So a helpful hint is AB represents the length of segment AB. So you can think of AB as a variable representing a number. So remember how we said just AB with no hat is equal to a number where... A, B with the hat is just talking about the segment. So A, B with no hat is talking about a number. It's talking about the length. So write a justification for each step. What do we know about this line segment? The whole thing equals four x minus four. So the whole thing is equal to the two parts, right? So we have NO, talking about the whole thing, is equal to NM plus MO. And this, if we go back to like 1.4, 1.3, this we know is the segment addition postulate. This was 1.3. So we don't solve that? Not yet. We'll get there. One step at a time. So remember, we need to write each step and give a justification for it. So now what do we do? We plug in. So we substitute 4x minus 4 for NO. What would we substitute for NM? 2x. And what do we substitute for MO? 3x minus 9. So what did we do for this step? Substitution property of equality. What do we do next? So we combine like terms. Do we have like terms on the same side of yeah. the equation? Yes, I'm yes. So let's focus on the yes part of it. So what can we combine on the right side of the equation? Two. Two. So 2x plus 3x is 5x minus 9. And what did we do? We simplified. So when you're doing it on like the same side of the equation, you're just simplifying. What can we do now? Add what? So let's add four to both sides. And what step would this be? What are we doing? We're adding, so it's the addition property 
of equality. So now we have 4x is equal to 5x minus 5. What did we do from this step to this one? Simplified. Simplified. So now what can we do? We subtract 5 from both sides. So this would be negative x, negative x is equal to negative 5. So this is the substitution property of equality. It's a substitution property of equality because we're subtracting on both sides of the equation sign. Wait, why isn't that simplifying? We're subtracting 5x from both sides. So now what can we do? Now you have to divide negative 1 or negative x. So we divide by negative 1. And this would be the division property of equality. And we get x is equal to 5. Negative 5 divided by negative 1 is 5. I still don't understand how that substitution if we're minusing. For which set? For when we minus 5x to 4x, how is that, how is that substitution? If it's oh, it's subtraction. I'm sorry. You're right. Because we're subtracting. So this would be... Subtraction property of equality because we're subtracting. No, it's subtraction. Because we're subtracting. Yeah, I accidentally wrote substitution the first time. But for this one, it's subtraction. Subtraction. So write a justification for each step. So what do we know about the angles? We have two angles that they don't equal 90 because it's not a right angle. But they are adjacent, but they add to give the whole angle, right? If we add the smaller one plus this one, we would get the whole angle ABC. So we can have angle... ABD. Let's start with the big one first. So we have ABC. What's ABC equal to? Uh, ABD plus angle DBC. So what is ABC equal? Uh, 
It says it right on the bottom of the whole oh, eight, eight, eight X. So ABC is eight X. What's angle ABD equal to? Three X plus five. And what's DBC? So plus six X minus 16. So how did we know that the two angles add together to give you the big angle? That was a postulate we did, right? This one is angle addition postulate. Is that the same thing as given both angles? Well, it's not necessarily given because the equation wasn't given. We had to know that the two smaller angles add up to the big angle. And we know that because of section 1.4, which we learned the angle addition postulate. And then what did we do to get from step one to step two? We had to combine like two. Oh, wait, oh, step one to step two. We had it. What did we do? We plugged in substitute. Okay, so 8x is the only term we have on the left side, but what can we combine on the right? Uh, 3x plus 6x. 3x plus 6x, which is 9x. And Jeremiah, what else can we combine? 5 and negative 16. What's 5 minus 16? Negative 11. So what did we do from the second step to the third step? We simplified. If we have time today. Why don't you... So... Now what can we do on both sides? Um, minus 9x. Minus 9x. That would be the subtraction. Subtraction. Property. Property of equality. And we have negative x is equal to negative 11. This we just simplified. What do we do next? Division of equality, division property of equality. We divide by negative 1. So that is the division property of equality. And then we just have x is equal to 11. Is it? It's okay. So in chapter one, we learned that segments with equal lengths are congruent and that angles with equal measures are congruent. So the reflexive, symmetric, and transitive properties of equality have corresponding properties of congruence. So we have the reflexive property of congruence. So figure A is congruent to figure A. This is reflexive. What do you do when you look in the mirror? What do you see? Reflection. Your reflection. So when you have the same thing on both sides of the congruent sign, it's reflexive. So this would be, the first one is the reflexive property of congruence. The symmetric property of congruence is if figure A is congruent to figure B, then figure B is congruent to figure A. So if angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, then angle 2 is congruent to angle, angle 1. So 
So this is symmetric property of congruence. The last one is the transitive property of congruence, mm -hmm. which is if figure A is congruent to figure B, and figure B is congruent to figure C, then figure A is congruent to figure C. So if we have segment PQ is congruent to RS, and RS is congruent to segment TU, then PQ is congruent to TU. So let's look at the transitive property of congruence with numbers. We're going to look at that down here. So if we have segment PQ is equal to 5. So PQ is equal to 5. RS is equal to 5. And TU is equal to 5. So if PQ and RS are equal, So 5 is equal to 5. RS and TU are equal. 5 is equal to 5. Then PQ and TU are equal. 5 is equal to 5. PQ is equal to RS. Oh, that's equal, yeah, that's a 5. So we're going to go over examples of these. Then PQ is equal to TU. So if this was given that PQ is equal to RS and RS is equal to TU, then we can use logic to come up with that PQ is equal to TU. And that's the transitive property of congruence. Okay, so remember, numbers are equal and figures are congruent. Remember when we said that segment PQ would be congruent to RS. And you have to put hats on everything. So we have a hat, a hat, and a hat. But we would drop the hats if we're talking about the length of PQ is equal to or S. So you would drop the hats on everything. So you use the equal sign when talking about numbers, and when talking about figures, you use the congruent sign. So identify the property that justifies each statement. So if we have segment Angle QRS is congruent to angle QRS. Would this be reflexive, symmetric, or transitive? Reflexive. Remember, because when you look in the mirror, you're looking at the same thing back. You're looking at your reflection. So this would be reflexive. What if we have the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 2? So the measure of angle 2 is equal to the measure of angle 1. Symmetric. Now let's look at C. Segment AB is congruent to segment CD. And segment CD is congruent to segment EF. So segment AB is congruent to EF. Transitive. Transitive. If we have 32 degrees is equal to 32 degrees, reflexive. reflexive. This one's the same thing, just more examples. 
I'll post it in the video, but if you guys got the last page, you'll get this one. We'll see it for now. So solve the equation, write a justification for each step. So let's rewrite the equation. We have z is equal to 5, z minus 5 over 6 is equal to negative 2. And what would this step be? Given. What do we do next? Um, u times the 6 to, to z minus 5 and then to 2. So we times the 6 on both sides. So we're left with z minus 5. And what's 6 times negative 2? Negative 12. And this would just be the multiplication property of equality. So multiplication property of equality. What do we do next? So we're adding 5 to both sides, and this would be the addition property of equality, and we would get z is equal to negative 7. We have two more slides left. Yay. Yay. We're all feeling it yesterday when you said that slide. Yeah. Okay. Solve the equation, write a justification for each step. So we have 6r minus 3 is equal to negative 2 times r plus 1. What would this step be? Given. Because it's given to us. What would we do next? So when we're multiplying the negative 2 times r and the plus 1, what are we doing? Distributive, Distributive property. So this is? Distributive property or, or of equality? Just distributive property because you're not doing it on both sides of the equation, right? The other ones are like addition property of equation because you're adding to both sides of the equal sign. But this you're just distributing. So just the distributive property. What can we do next? Add like so we can add three to both sides. We have 6r is equal to negative 2r plus 1. So when we add 3, that would be the addition property of equality. And then the next step, we just simplified. What would we do next? Add 2r to both sides. Jeremiah, what would this step be? Addition property of equality. So we have 8r is equal to 1. We just simplified. So now what do we do? Divide 8 on both sides. And what would this step be? Division property of equality. And we have r is equal to 1 over 8. That's our proof. Last slide, yay. Last one. 
So identify the property that justifies each statement. So if we have x is equal to y and y is equal to z, so x is equal to z. Transitive. What if we have angle D E F is congruent to angle D E F? Reflexive. Last one. If segment A B is congruent to segment C D, so segment C D is congruent to A B. We only have two things, though. Symmetric. Uh -huh.